Good evening from Los Angeles. I'm Tavis Smiley. Tonight we continue our conversation with R&B singer D'Angelo. The multiple Grammy Award winner dropped his long-awaited third album, Black Messiah, last December. He joins us tonight for part two of his first televised conversation in over 10 years. We're glad you've joined us. The conclusion of our conversation with the brilliant artist D'Angelo. Coming up right now. Welcome back tonight to our conversation, rare conversation, with uh, an artistic genius named D'Angelo. His new project, latest project, is called D'Angelo and the Vanguard. It's called Black Messiah, a powerful, powerful piece of work um, at a time that music like this is terribly propitious. And so I encourage you to, uh, to get this and add it to your collection. Mm -hmm. D'Angelo, thanks for sticking around for night two. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having we, me. We ended our conversation last night with you just starting to make the point about the corporatization of the music business, which is true, to your point, across the board yes, in this country and I think in all industries. But you've been in the game long enough now, at least a couple of decades, you've been in the game long mm -hmm. enough now to have an assessment, I would think, of how the business has changed in ways that you don't like, and then we'll turn it and put a happy face on it and talk about the things about the business that you might like that mm -hmm. are different now than they were when you first started. But what, what do you not like about the way the game has changed? Um, well, uh, the point that you made earlier about uh, there's a lot of uh, people just copying the same format. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was more about being original. Originality was the thing. Everybody who was trying to make it, was trying to make it on their own terms, with their own sound, with their own message. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of that now. So I, I think that was, that's one of the things I don't like. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything about the business that has changed that you do like over these, over these years? I mean, certainly technology is, has changed, but you, you're such a stripped down sort of cat anyway. Yes, very it's, it's much not so. like It's not like you need technology to do what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, it, not in that way, but is there anything about the business that you like that's changed over these, over these couple decades? He pauses. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess <laughs> But that, that, that doesn't surprise me, man, because the game has changed in so many ways that people are just annoyed by. I think that the, the technology, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it serves for potentiality, for yeah. a lot of new things. It's so wide open right now because, yeah. uh, but that's the, it's, 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 it's exciting mm -hmm. and it's scary at the same time, but you know, everything moves in cycles. Yeah. So, uh, as bad as it can get, there's still like this silver lining behind that. Because you know it's got to come around at some point. Mm -hmm. And I can feel it. You can feel it bubbling underneath. Yeah. yeah. What, where, where, have you, where, where have you come down, or you may not have said anything publicly because you don't do much talking like mm -hmm. this, but on, on, on when it comes to downloading D'Angelo's music, what's, what's, your, what's your... I think that's, that's another this thing. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's something that you just got to get used to. I, I, I think that, like I said, it's, 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 it's so wide open right now that I don't think anyone can put, record companies either can put heads or tails on what it is or mm -hmm. what it's going to be. So in that respect, it's like an open canvas. So, but I, I love the, the stance that some of these younger artists are taking right now. They're not even signing mm -hmm. with record labels, which to me is a good thing because it's putting the power and the authority back into the hands of the people that that really belongs to, and that's the artists and the people. So that's the one good thing about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked last night about the groove, and you can't be a D'Angelo fan and, and not just be in love with the groove, or if you love the groove, you'll become a D'Angelo fan. <laughs> um, but I want to talk tonight not about the groove per se, but about the beat, which takes me to this relationship with Quest Love. Yes, sir. Yes, what sir. is, what is, and you, you have found, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not an artist. I just love music, obviously. Mm. And so I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, but there's something about that beat that, that, um, that you put your stuff over mm. that just works and, and distinguishes your sound. Um, tell me about that, tell me about that beat that just moves me so. Wow. Pocket, that's yeah. what it's called. 
Yeah, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. It's about the pocket. We ain't talking hot pockets. We talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pocket. Or, um, we like to say, we, there's a couple of things we like to say, riding the track. Mm -hmm. like you ride the track like a Cadillac. Right. Or we, um, we put it behind the beat. Mm -hmm. Behind, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just blues. That's just come from a blues thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I think that's what it's about. In the mirror, Quest Love. Yeah. And so that's how me and him met and connected mm -hmm. um, because of that pocket. And I love his approach to the drums. He was like the answer to my prayer. Like I was mm -hmm. looking for someone who understood. I'm a, I'm a huge hip hop head. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's a lot of my origins is gospel and hip hop mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, his approach to drumming was that of, say, like a DJ premier or a great hip hop producer. Um, plus, he's a minimalist. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of great drummers you'll see have, you know, 500 drums up there, you know. Um, and he was one of the few drummers I saw that could kill with just a snare, yeah. a kick, a hi-hat, mm -hmm. one cymbal, and one tom, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's something to be said about that. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, it's something to be said about, like, Pino, my bass player, mm -hmm. Pino. It's something to be said about a bass player who don't need but just four strings. Yeah. You know, and you see a lot of bass players that got eight strings on yeah. them. Just four. Yeah. You can't do it in four strings. Man. You can't do it anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I get. I, I I was just a choir director. I was never. I'm never. I was never. I directed the choir, but That's I was right. not not an artist in that sense. But I I just get so turned on by 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 drummers, and artists like like Amir, like Questlove, mm -hmm. who can play that behind the beat groove. Yes. See, I, I can do it on the one. Yeah. But that behind the beat, that thing is just. It's it's just it's just slightly. But that's the thing. On the one is that's what it is. Yeah. And and as long as that, long as that one is there. Yeah. You can do whatever you want to do around it, behind it, in yeah. front of it. Yeah. Then yeah. just come back in, <laughs> you know. And like, it, it, you, it, it's pretty soon after a couple of revolutions of it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's hypnotic, and your it neck. Is, it is hypnotic. Before you know it, your neck is. That's exactly what it is. You know what I mean? So that's exactly the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about um, about lyrical content. We've mm. been talking about the groove. We're talking about the beat. We're talking about on the one. We're talking about behind the beat. Mm. Um, talk to me about about lyrics and how important lyrics are to you. Lyrics are very important. It's uh, it's like a marriage. So, to me, I, I don't know. I, I don't mean it to be sexist about it, but to me, the music is the man, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the bridegroom, and the lyrics are the bride. Mm -hmm. So that union is, is just it's important. But um, that's not that's not sexist. You, you you okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. that wasn't sexist at just, all. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good metaphor is what it was. See, I, I asked that question because it might sound silly to some, but I ain't going to call no names, but I know a bunch of artists who, you, if you listen to their music, you can tell what they care about. Mm. And lyrical content ain't it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They may have the groove, they may have the beat, they may have the, you know, yes. but they don't have that. They don't have, they don't have the um, lyrical content is not so terribly important to them. Mm. And the thing that troubles me these days is that we've just lost, I mean, melody is like non-existent now. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of people talk about it. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't like to get into it because I don't want to seem like I'm being unfair yeah. to, to you know, a lot of young cats that are coming up. And, right. You're entitled to your opinion, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah trying to make music. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of people, that's what it is. It's like it's not really music. Yeah. It's not music. Like you said, melody, you yeah. know, it's non-existent. Sometimes it's, yeah. it could be about uh, noise, electronic noise. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I had Linda Ronstadt, a great artist on this program one time, mm -hmm. and she called it ear pollution. It's not like that, Linda. Not, not air, ear. Ear pollution. Ear pollution. That's nice. Yeah, Linda told me that. Um,